Can I just wish everyone a happy new year who we hadn't seen since last year? I'm glad everyone's kept safe. And we move on to the agenda. Number one, apologies for accidents. I think we're all here, which is really good. Oh, Did sorry, Chair. Okay. Um, that's for the love of us and apologies. Okay, brilliant. Decorations of interest, anyone? No, thank you. Minutes on the last meeting, do we agree they're a great record? Thank you. And we move on to planning applications now. The first one is 4A, which is construction of seven number dwellings, association infrastructure work on land adjacent to Ketzel. And I'll ask Marie to take this for the report. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So this application is on land adjacent to 29 Ketz Hill and the application proposes the construction of seven dwellings with associated infrastructure works. The application site is outlined here in red. The land has last been used as a car park for locals and commuters and also partly as a garden to the adjacent um, Ketz Tavern public house. That pub is now closed and the property has permission for conversion to residential use. Within the same terrace, there's also a bakery and hairdressers at ground level, and that terrace is locally listed. Further towards the roundabout, you've got the Castle Public House, which is a Grade 2 listed building fronting towards the roundabout. To the north of the site, there is an area of open green space, which is largely flat and then leads up towards Mousehold Heath. On the opposite side of Ketz Hill from the site, there is a site used for car sales. And to the east of the site, both sides of Ketz Hill are lined with residential properties, and the closest one is immediately east of the site across Spitting Fields. This is the proposed site layout plan for the development. So the um, seven proposed dwellings would form a terrace that would front towards Ketz Hill. Each property would have a front garden to the south, which would be enclosed by a low wall. Along the rear, the grey line that you can see there, apologies that you can't see the cursor on the screen um, for me to point things out, but the, the grey line that you can see along the back of the um, darker block of the terrace is a level access path, and each property would have a small garden space off that at the rear, supplemented by a larger communal garden space enclosed by hedging in the area to the west of the terrace. Four car parking spaces are proposed to serve the dwellings. They'd be accessed off spittle fields and make use of the existing vehicular access into the site that would be widened. On the plan, the larger green um, circles that you can see along the northern boundary are existing trees that are proposed to be retained. There are also two trees proposed to be retained on the front towards Ketz Hill. The proposal has been revised since it was first submitted to retain as many of the existing trees on site as possible and the revision has taken the tree loss from eight to four. The four that are proposed to be removed include one on the northern boundary where the parking spaces are proposed and three along the front Ketz Hill where they would conflict with the position of the terrace and the front gardens. On the plan here, you can see indications for both hard and soft landscaping and also for the replacement of trees. There's an area of five new trees shown with the smaller green circles in the area to the southwest of the site and also five um, along the eastern boundary. The details of the hard and soft landscaping and tree replacement that has been submitted today isn't considered to be the optimal solution for the site in terms of replacing the biomass of the trees that would be lost and also their biodiversity and habitat value or to, in, or to provide a high quality environment for the occupiers of the site and the surrounding area. It's therefore proposed that the details on, indicated on this plan um, are subject to further negotiations and agreed by condition. Towards the southwest of the site, you can see an area outlined in blue. That's a space that would be reserved from the development and would be reserved for future highway improvements. The space that has been indicated could um, potentially allow for the highway authority to provide a two car parking layby within the highway that would provide some visitor parking along the street for the public to use. 
this um, could be delivered separately and independently of this housing proposal as part of a highway scheme for a bus lane downhill on Ketts Hill, which would result in the loss of existing one hour visitor spaces within the highway along part of the frontage of this site and the adjacent businesses. Within the development, it's also proposed to provide a new footpath shown with the, with the grey route along the western boundary. That would be a path that would connect Ketts Hill to Spitalfields and along Spitalfields, the bus lane proposal also includes some additional visitor parking on street. That bus lane proposal is currently subject to public consultation by the County Council and if it progresses to be delivered, it could be carried out independently of this housing development and vice versa. The proposed elevations here show that the terrace of two-storey dwellings would be stepped up as they move eastwards and uphill along Ketts Hill. They are proposed to be of a similar style and proportions to other terraced housing in the area. They'd be constructed of red brick with pantile roofs and the front window details and porches over the front doors would be in a more contemporary style. The drawing here also shows the relationship of the proposed terrace with the neighbouring properties to the west and to the east. You can see that there would be an area of um, existing and proposed landscaping to the west of the property shown on the top side there to the um, left hand side of the terrace. So that would occupy the space between the terrace and the neighbouring property to the west. On the eastern side, you can see the outline of the neighbouring property and the scale of that. There are two dashed lines on the drawing. These show a 25 degree line taken from the ground floor and first floor windows of the neighbouring property. There are three windows at each level of that property which face towards the site. Those lines and the 25 degree um, angle that they show demonstrate that there wouldn't be any intersection of the proposed development with that line which in accordance with building research establishment guidance demonstrates that there wouldn't be a substantial impact on the daylight that those windows receive. Now the drawing here shows the lines taken from a position at the head of the ground floor and first floor windows. The guidance does advise that the point should be taken from the center of the windows and having analyzed that if you drop the lines down then there continues to be no intersection and it is considered that there wouldn't be any substantial or unacceptable impact on the daylight or overshadowing to the neighbouring dwelling to the east. Looking at the proposed floor plans here, each dwelling would provide one bedroom and on the ground floor there'd be open plan living, dining and kitchen area and on the first floor there'd be one double bedroom, a bathroom and also a desk space. Moving on to um, some photos of the site, this is standing at the bottom of Ketts Hill with the roundabout just behind us looking um, approximately east or northeast. In the foreground you can see the Ketts Hill Bakery and the adjacent hairdressers and the former pub forming that terrace of three properties. The application site is the area that you can see with some trees and vegetation on immediately next to the former pub. Beyond that, you can see dwellings fronting Ketts Hill and on the opposite side of the road, the trees on the right hand side of the photo there are within the boundary of the car sale site opposite. Moving closer towards the site, here you can see the gable end of the um, former Ketts Tavern, um, which forms the boundary with the application site. In the foreground, you can see some low vegetation which has become overgrown since the site was last used. There's also a tree um, which you can just make out without any leaves on to the right hand side of the photo. That's proposed to be retained as part of this development. And in the background, you can see the tree line along the northern boundary of the site and also further trees on the higher ground towards Mousehold Heath beyond the site. The area in the foreground immediately behind where you can see a car parked here is the space where there would be land reserved for the future development of a parking lay by, by the Highway Authority. Looking at the remainder of the frontage of the site, you can again see the overgrown nature, the vegetation across it. There's a small group of three trees towards the right hand side of the photo, which are those which are proposed to be removed and one at the corner of the site that would be retained. 
you can also see the neighbouring dwellings to the east and um, more of the tree line beyond the site in this view as well. Then moving in um, closer, the tree that you can see here just next to the signage is proposed to be retained. This is the road junction between Ketts Hill and Spitalfields and the red brick end of terrace property that you can see there is the nearest existing neighbouring dwelling and that's the one that those um, 25 degree lines and the assessment of um, daylight to them has been undertaken from. Again, you can see the rising ground to the rear <coughs> of the trees in the background. Then um, carrying on up Ketz Hill and looking downhill this time, you can see neighbouring dwellings on each side of the road. In the foreground, the green space of the application site and beyond that, the gable end of the former pub. Now we're moving round to Spitalfields towards the rear of the site. The trees that you can see on the left hand side of the road in the foreground are within the application site and they're all proposed to be retained. On the opposite side of the road, that's the open green space that then leads up towards Mousehold. And the roadway here leads down to a cul-de-sac at the bottom, giving access to the castle pub. Then again, remaining on Spitalfields and looking back in the opposite direction, the post and rail fence that you can see in the foreground by the bins is the boundary to the former pub site. The um, tree which has lost its leaves in immediately behind that fence is proposed to be retained, as is the tree with the um, sort of ready orangey leaves next to that, but the ash tree beyond that is proposed to be removed to allow space for the four parking spaces that are proposed where the existing vehicular entrance into the site is. Now in terms of assessment, as is set out in the report, the loss of the former uses and the provision of new housing on the site is considered to be acceptable in principle. The applicants have received funding as part of the government's COVID-19 rough sleeper response for this development and they intend to offer the dwellings to former rough sleepers in the first instance and as general needs affordable housing for affordable rent in the longer term. In planning terms it is not possible or necessary to secure this affordable tenure on a development of this scale so the proposal must be considered as market housing which could be occupied by any tenure. Representations have raised concerns about use of the development as a homeless facility and occupation by former rough sleepers due to existing crime and antisocial behaviour issues in the area. But in terms of this planning application, it must be considered as any other housing would be, and on this basis it is not considered that it would give rise to any unacceptable amenity impacts. The design is considered to be appropriate for the site and its surroundings, but it is key that a high quality landscape scheme incorporating replacement tree planting is agreed by condition to mitigate the loss of biomass, biodiversity and habitat and to provide a high quality environment for future occupiers. There would be no conflict between the proposed bus lane scheme and this housing development. Indeed, the development may help to assist addressing the loss of visitor parking on streets as a result of the bus lane. The proposal is considered to be acceptable in all other respects, subject to the conditions which are listed in the report, and it is therefore recommended for approval. Thank you very much, Margaret. Uh, we have got a statement. There is a statement. There is also a statement. There is also a statement. Which are? Yeah, just remember, members, there's a supplementary report. I hope you all got the pages and read them. Uh, we have got a statement to be read out in Palau, are you going to read that out? Thank you. So this is a statement um, on behalf of a, a neighbour who couldn't be here today. I have read through all documents provided online for the application, however I have strong objection to this build. As the opposing neighbour mentioned in main issue 3, number 89, the right to light measurements taken of how the proposal will affect my property are not at all sufficient or accurate as they are only estimates, nor have the measurements been taken from the correct place. These estimated measurements have been taken from the top of the window height, whereas legally they should be taken from the middle of the window height, thus being completely inaccurate. Therefore, I want complete accurate measurements taken to show what the proposed will affect my rights to light. 
The rooms that will be affected by the proposed are habited daily and are our main living space. Not one person has asked what rooms these windows are for, and this is completely unacceptable. During winter months, light is very much naturally affected, and this is a given. However, these dwellings will affect this dramatically more. In addition, the preserved trees already at the site affect the light coming into my garden, which is something we accepted when purchasing our property. However, adding dwellings to this site will again affect this dramatically. Furthermore, in main issue 3, number 87, it is upsetting learning that you are concerned that the proposed dwellings will have small rear gardens and would be overshadowed by the terrace and trees, yet no consideration of overshadowing of my property has been considered. The proposed build has, been, has now been moved two and a half metres closer to my property and in addition to my rights to light, being overlooked by the dwellings as windows face directly onto and into my property, my privacy will be dramatically affected. Looking out across a block of bricks when your concern lies with the dwellings only is very upsetting and inconsiderate for someone who has worked extremely hard to save and purchase their own property. Furthermore, you have not stated how long this build will take, which is unacceptable. Thank you. Uh, because we had a statement, we've got the agent here now, Jake Lambert, who's going to be at three minutes. Thank you. Thanks, Chair, um, and thanks, Maria, as well, for your presentation, which I think covers a lot of the um, so I, the, the kind of issues around rights to light. Um, so I won't um, rehearse those exhaustively because I think Maria's covered them quite in, in quite a lot of detail. But um, in terms of um, it's, it's all in accordance with um, the, uh, the standards that Maria mentioned about from the uh, building research establishment. Um, there's also quite a significant offset between the proposed terrace and, and the dwelling in question, um, kind of separated as well by a strip of landscaping. Um, so again, we, we, we don't really feel that um, there's going to be a, a significant loss of privacy for this, for this property um, in, in the grand scheme of things. Um, and just in relation to um, how long the build is likely to take, um, so um, you may be aware already, but um, it's, it's, this, this, um, this application has come about um, as a result of funding from the government um, as part of its, its kind of rough sleeper response and um, it, it ultimately looking to make a start on site in, at the end of February. Um, and that's essential um, to, to make sure we, we, we don't lose this, um, th this, this really quite unique opportunity for funding as well to deliver housing for, um, for those who are less, less fortunate. So, um, so yeah, that's my, um, that's my response. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Right. I mean, did you want to come back on any of the points raised? No, thank you very much. We'll move on to questions then, the Council Sands. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, looking at the uh, diagram of, or the map of the proposed outline, it's got a path running along the back of the uh, uh, properties. Why isn't that path moved to the back of the garden to afford people more privacy from people walking past the windows? It would seem to make more sense to me. It would in terms of, of privacy and, and providing sort of self-contained um, gardens. However, there would be a conflict if you moved it to the back with the root protection areas for the substantial trees along that boundary. There's also various levels within and outside the site which have made the provision of level access to the rear doors of the terrace quite difficult. We've looked at a few options with the applicants and the architect to see um, how that can be resolved and, and this was considered to be the optimum solution. It is recognised that those garden spaces wouldn't be fully enclosed or private, um, given that there's also a larger communal garden space, there would be an element of sort of communal external amenity um, for the development as a whole. Um, it's, it's something of a compromise, but it's not considered unacceptable in amenity terms. Surely permeable paving would overcome any problems with the routes, etc. I think the difficulty is with um, the levels, uh, the, ground, the existing ground levels, and if there'd need to be any alteration there to provide services, and, and how that would then give ac level access to the back doors of the properties um, across that distance. Uh, thank you. I'd just like to ask one question first, Councillor Berglein, and you can come in. Um, just on page 41, the contamination. The contamination was actually found 
on on the on the proposed site. And there's a map of state report in which you were going to pose a soil cover system. Are you just hiding that up? Or where, what kind of accommodation is it? It's um, providing a soil cover system so there'd be a membrane and then a layer of um, imported clean soil on top of that for the garden spaces and the landscaped areas, which would be the areas that could potentially expose occupiers. And what is the accommodation? What, what, what kind? The contamination um, is likely to be from the former use of the site for parking, so any um, oil or petrol fuel that might have um, infiltrated the soils, and also from um, there was previously housing on the site that was demolished some time ago, and that may have left um, contaminants in the soil as well. Okay, thank you. Can um, just bear with me, I'm just trying to make sure I understand correctly what's in the report and then I'll come to my question there. So, so we've got a, a landscaping scheme in front of us currently which, um, and you, might, you, you will be able to help me, falls short quite a bit in uh, kind of replacing biomass and um, increasing biodiversity. So, so this, so, uh, but your report says that you will condition that this scheme will be revised. So what we're seeing at the moment will not is not what will be there because you wouldn't deem that acceptable either. Um, so, so how? I mean, what what can we expect to be there, and in how far can that is? Can you condition that, and can it, can I just get any sense of where we will end up with biomass and biodiversity? under the conditioned landscaping scheme. So we have had um, some further discussions and negotiations um, since the, the submission of, of this version of the plan and also there have been some more detailed um, landscape um, drawings provided. Um, we are confident that there is a more acceptable solution that can be negotiated and agreed that would provide better replacement of the trees that are to be lost than this proposal. The 10 trees which are indicated um, on this version of the plan would be relatively small specimens at the time of planting and also species that wouldn't would have quite tight um, narrow canopies. So we've we've given we've got some advice to give and, and we've had some conversations about choosing different species that would have a much broader canopy that then provides increased biomass in comparison and also better habitat and biodiversity value. Those trees could also be planted at a at a bigger size to provide a more immediate um, value. Um, the applicants have been um, very cooperative on finding a better solution with this um, and would be looking to, to promptly agree um, a more acceptable solution under the condition that's recommended and that would that condition would apply notwithstanding any of the details which are indicated on this drawing. And so your overall assessment then would be on if you know if those solutions were to be implemented where would we end up with biomass loss and biodiversity loss? The, the objective, um, in, in accordance with our policies, would be to not agree anything that would result in any unacceptable loss, um, looking at achieving an equivalent in terms of, of what's being, um, the, you know, the four trees which are being removed and, and what they would be replaced with immediately and over the lifetime of the development. And can I just have a follow-up on that? So uh, one of the concerns that's in the report is that um, that future occupants may ask for trees to be removed. Would it be possible to put TPOs on the trees that are being retained, especially um, those bigger trees around the boundaries? That is possible, yeah. Okay, there's no other questions, I'll move the report. Is that uh, great? Thank you, Chair. Um, I have a question about trees and another one about paths. So on the trees, it's quite hard to um, to judge on something that isn't yet in front of us. So can we assume that the replacement planting and protecting is the bare minimum that will happen um, if the conditions and the scheme change um, for the biodiversity replacement? Um, my other question is about paths. So looking at the path between Kettsville and Spitalfield, next to the old Ketts Tavern, um, I'm just wondering if that will go to parking on Spitalfield, so people who want to stop at the bakery have somewhere to park if the lay-by doesn't get built. Um, a lot of people in the area really value that bakery, 
and are worried that you know it gets a, it gets a lot of tra uh, trade from passing footfall from local people, and um, any reduction in its in its footfall or carfall um, would threaten the bakery and all the customers who use it. Mm -hmm. If I could take your, your second question first, yes, the, the path would be for the public to use um, to move through from Kettle to Spitalfields and, and back in the opposite direction. So that would facilitate um, access, pedestrian access from the parking along Spitalfields to um, to any property on Kettle, but specifically it would help to, to give better access to those parking spaces for anybody using the bakery or the hairdressers. And that's the intention of including it within this scheme to help address that. Um, on your, your first um, question about the biodiversity replacement and how we can be um, sure of agreeing that by condition, um, the, the submission of a further landscaping scheme by condition would be, um, would be subject to the same considerations as if the landscaping scheme was considered as part of the planning application, so the same policy requirements and the same level of scrutiny. Um, and we wouldn't be approving that and approving an application to agree that landscape scheme if it's not in accordance with policy and, and provides the replacement biomass and biodiversity um, that the scheme requires. So would that then come back to committee or be decided by delegated authority? It would be dealt with by officers as the discharge of conditions applications are. Okay, I'll move the recommendation, which is to approve. Have we got a second for that? Thank you, Sully Button. Uh, any discussion, members? Thank you, Councillor Bergler. I do agree with Councillor Graham that it is really difficult to vote on something where clearly this, I mean, the scheme in front of us is not acceptable, I think, in terms of, um, in terms of the replacement of trees and in terms of um, biomass loss and biodiversity loss. So I wouldn't vote for this scheme, to be frank. Now, I've got the reassurance that officers are looking at it again, but we often come here where we you know, still don't agree with what officers deem is acceptable under our policies. So it's not that I don't like the fact that there's going to be housing, but I don't feel able to vote for something that I haven't got in front of me, and I wouldn't vote for this. So I'd, I mean, I've, I feel the only option I've got is to abstain. Um, just because I haven't got the details of what will actually happen. Okay, any other members? No, I'm going to go straight to the vote. And all those in favour of, of approval, please show. Sorry, members, I can't say voice. Um, it's a recorded vote, so I'll call your names out. You can put your hands down when I call your name. Thank you. Councillor Peak, voting for. Councillor Giles, Councillor Button, Councillor Everett, Councillor Maxwell, Councillor Stukeley, Councillor Sands, Councillor Thomas, and Councillor Driver. Thank you. Those against, please show. And extensions, please. Abstentions, Councillors Graham, <coughs> Councillor Champion, and Councillor Bogline. Thank you. Okay, so that's going to be accepted. And approved, thank you very much. And we move on now to 4B, which is 81 uh, Park Lane. And if we ask, uh, the officer is, is Jacob, but Jacob's left the council now for another job in London. So uh, Lara's going to take us through the report when she can get there. So the application here is for a property at 81 Park Lane. Um, you can see the red line of the application site shown here. 
site is located on the corner um, of Park Lane running to the east and Avenue Road running westward from the site. Maida Vale is a cul-de-sac accommodating a row of terrace properties located to the east of the site here. I'll take you through some photos of the site. Um, the main building on the site is, is stands at two storeys tall, uh, accommodates a cafe on the ground floor and a flat above. To the rear of the site, you can see just here, there is a yard which is predominantly occupied by a single storey garage. So just moving around the site, so you've got Maida Vale just here. This is Avenue Road and that's Park Lane. And this is the application site. This is a view into the rear yard. You can see that the site slopes so that the um, this is the ground floor of the cafe and this is the yard at a lower level. This is a view from Maida Vale. Um, you've got the, the wall of the garage located here um, and the yard beyond and this is 81 Park Lane. <coughs> Um, moving um, further down Maida Vale, you can see um, this is number one Maida Vale, um, and the application site can just be seen here. So the plans are to rebuild the existing garage on largely the same footprint and to convert it to a small independent office space capable of accommodating likely to be one or two members of staff. The office would benefit from windows facing towards the remaining shared yard and bicycle and refuse storage is indicated on this plan with cycle storage located here and refuse storage located here. Full details of bicycle storage are currently recommended to be agreed by condition. A new pedestrian access to the site <coughs> is, is proposed to be inserted into the wall to Maida Vale just here. So the application has attracted 12 objections and 7 letters of support. The primary concerns of objectors appear to relate to the existing operation of the cafe and anticipated impact on car parking as well as refuse storage. It should be noted that the proposal has no impact on the availability of permit parking spaces for residents um, as new businesses located within control parking zones are not eligible for new parking permits. Um, and the, addition, the, the existing parking located along this boundary here would not be affected by the proposals as this is only a pedestrian route. It is acknowledged though that as, as it stands the garage could be used for staff visitors or deliveries for the ex existing cafe use but considering the, the, the loss of, of one parking, single parking space for this unit, it's not considered significant within the context. The closing off of this poorly located vehicular access on a tight bend close to a number of junctions is welcomed in highway safety terms. Since publication of the report, three further letters uh, have been received from the public um, and it's understood that a further letter was circulated directly to committee members last night. Um, the letters largely refer to matters which have previously been raised by objectors um, and which are covered within the committee report. Um, the concerns relate largely to parking and waste, so I'd just like to clarify that the proposal does not affect parking arrangements um, and that the yard is considered a sufficient size for the storage of waste for each of the three uses. We've also received a comment from the Norwich Society who object to the proposals. The recommendation is to approve the application subject to a number of conditions which are listed within the report. Have you placed that? Sorry, more of the way. We've got Councillor Carlo speaking on behalf of Megan Yeah, we've got three speakers here. Councillor Carlo is going to speak on behalf of uh, Megan Bramby. And if you, you've got three minutes, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Yeah, Megan Bradbury lives next door at number one, Maida Vale, and she's unable to attend today, so has given me a statement to read. As the owners of one Maida Vale adjoining number 81, we object on grounds that the site is already overdeveloped. 
for the type and location of the property. It does not possess enough amenity space for the development alongside the property's existing businesses and will change the secluded nature of our street. This site is already home to a three bedroom flat and a busy cafe restaurant. The leaseholder's recent premises license application plans to use the courtyard garden as outdoor space for cafe customers at some future point. The plan to incorporate a new commercial unit in the space whilst also offering only 440 litres of space for refuse on a site that, even without the new unit, currently stores 1,200 litres, shows a distinct lack of planning. Our worry is that without adequate space to accommodate all uses, the bins will be stored on the pavement, as was the case with the previous cafe. <laughs> Cycle storage is also inadequate. A 90 centimetre wide gap between the new unit and the back elevation of 81 <coughs> is intended to provide secure cycle storage for the cafe customers and employees, three residents in the upstairs flat and two employees of the new unit. This development will irre revocably alter the identity and character of Maid of Vale. While the wall um, while the wall the owners plan to demolish and rebuild is in need of repair, it marks an important transition from the frontages to Park Lane and Portersfield Road that helps to give the dwellings on Maida Vale their unique secluded character. Introducing modern anthracite grey UPPC windows and a new separate entrance onto Maida Vale, thereby breaking the flow of the wall, will make this site, which lies within the Hayman Grove conservation area, distinctly unattractive. <clears throat> the boundary wall and courtyard at 81 Park Lane also currently provide a helpful buffer zone separating our residents and the street from the various business activities on the site. Our house is an end of terrace being attached to 81 at the very rear of the property. By attaching a new commercial unit directly onto the front of our house and turning a garage used for storage into a business, which will be occupied Monday to Saturday, 8am to 6.30pm. And by adding an entrance directly onto Maida Vale, this development will allow for commercial activity to further encroach upon our street, the attraction and character of which comes largely from its secluded identity. Planned use of a new commercial unit is um, ambiguous. Whilst the recommendations of the planning report insist on a class E brackets G brackets I classification, the body of the planning report appears to support the applicant's intention to use the unit as a small studio for either an artist or architectural practice. This is at odds with the classification as class E G I covers only offices to carry out any operational or administrative functions, not artist studios. Should the unit be allowed to function as an artist studio, we would likely face an unreasonable rise in noise levels to our home, which is unacceptable. We urge the committee to reject this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've got a few more speakers. Um, Kirsty Bepper, if you'd like to sign, you have three minutes as well. But... Good morning committee, thank you for hearing me. I'd like to raise some unresolved objections to the proposal. On a procedural note, it's said in the report that an additional two-week consultation with neighbours was undertaken on submission of additional information and that no additional letters of representation were received. But none of the residents of Maida Vale received a letter or email notifying us, so we weren't able to respond. The report says that the site has historically been used as a shop with associated accommodation above. This is untrue. Before these developers bought it in 2013, only the front two rooms of the ground floor facing out onto Park Lane bought a shop. The rear three rooms were the kitchen, sitting room, and study of the residents. I can provide plans and photos if required. This is important information because the yard has always, has always been part of the residence and was used for recreation, for bin storage and for parking, hence the garage and the large gate of access on Park Lane. Although the current developers have changed the use of these three ground floor rooms to commercial, the yard space is still needed for bike storage and bin storage of the flat. The report says the courtyard to the rear of the property is currently used as additional space for users of the cafe, as well as providing refuse storage for both the residential and commercial users on site. 
but then also the applicant has shown there is sufficient space for bins and cycle storage and the courtyard will remain for use by the cafe. The first floor residential use does not currently have use of the courtyard for amenity space. The bins currently on site are two 240-litre City Council recycling bins. Um, no, we, we can't actually show them either. No, not unless they're already... Is that correct, love? Yes, sir. David? I think those, those um, drawings are ones that have already been sent to members as part of the um, document that was sent round last night. Okay. So members will already have those. Okay. <coughs> yeah, it's fine. You can uh, put them up if you want. Yeah. Was it sent by a resident? Yes. Yes, I I think, yep. yeah, those have been circulated individually to members, so, I mean, uh, the, 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 there's... Yes, you are. Uh, well, just in your hand, really, rather... Well, uh, yeah. Sorry, Lara, but was the PDF, that's been sent to all members, is it? Well, it was sent to me. Is that right? Yeah, I okay. I didn't receive that, so it's not part of the committee papers. Okay. So can I be sent back? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> But then also the applicant has shown, sorry, quoting, the applicant has shown that there is sufficient space for bins and cycle storage and the courtyard will remain for use by the cafe. The first for residential use does not currently have the use of the courtyard for the space. The bins currently on site are two 240-litre city council recycling bins, two 240-litre city council waste bins, and one 240-litre commercial collection glass bin, as you can see in the photo. These council bins are collected by the City Council and in the photo you can see them out for collection. These photos were taken this week. As you can see, the cafe is not eligible for council waste collection. These bins are residential and all four council bins are clearly being utilised. This raises the question of whether there are currently sufficient bins for the cafe waste, given that it's open seven days a week, mostly from eight till eight. And this might explain the catering tops and boxes you can see around the yard in the photo. Another commercial building would surely need a bin. The report concludes that a small office professional space is not anticipated to produce a large amount of rubbish, sorry, a large amount of commercial waste. But the application says that the space is intended for use as a studio for either an artist or an architectural practice. This is also stated in the report. Speaking as an artist, it is impossible to second guess how much waste will be generated, and some of this may be hazardous, such as paint needing separate facility. The developers have said that four 110 litre bins would be sufficient for this whole site. This would be a reduction from the total of 1,200 litre storage currently to a total of 440 litres for the whole site, less than half, and with an extra business added. Even if this were enough, the bin storage space they propose is not big enough for the four 110 litre bins. As you can see, there is only space for three 110 litre bins, and it's worth noting that this storage is directly under the cafe, kitchen door and window. Finally, I would like to quote the Norwich Society as their objection has been omitted from the planning report. Sorry, this is written yesterday. They say, a member of our committee visited the site and considers that far too much has been crammed on a small site which is inappropriate for a separate unit. This application has approximately the same footprint to develop a commercial unit in the backyard at 81 Park Lane. This proposal in no way addresses the concerns that we raised previously. We remain concerned about the detrimental impact on the street scene. We have been contacted by local residents and share their concerns. We understand that there is a restricted restrictive covenant to protect the wall, and if so, this should be taken into account in the planning decision. Our objection to this proposal therefore stands. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Um, we've got another one, Alice Carrier, yes, and you have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me a few minutes to go over my objections. I live in one of the 14 dwellings in Maida Vale and have done so for over 20 years. I don't know if all of the committee have had the opportunity to physically view the space of the backyard at 81 Park Lane. The plans presented do not really give a sense of how small that area is. Parking is a major issue. Visitors to number 81 continually park illegally in the cul-de-sac and more dangerously customers to the cafe pull up onto the pavement in front of it. The cafe owner's response to criticism is that it is not her responsibility. If the garage area is built upon, there would be no legal parking space for that property. 
and likely more problem parking from increased visitors to the site. I think it's totally unreasonable for the owners to suggest putting a gateway through the boundary wall impinging on an area beyond their property. This action would take away at least two valuable parking spaces to which residents have made available permits. The owners have had nine years in which to maintain this wall. It is not beyond repair and I hope the committee have read the objections from the Norwich Society. This wall is an important feature to the entrance of the cul sac and worth preserving. The courtyard is already a multifunctional area used for storage bikes, bins and recreational purposes. In their recent successful bid for an extended opening hours and alcohol license, the cafe tenant implied her customers would have use of the courtyard. The owner's plan would mean reducing the available outdoor space. Given the recognised importance of open spaces, particularly during a pandemic, it is reckless not to take into account present and future occupants. Now that people are being urged to work from home and this trend continues, I don't see the necessity for a commercial unit in this courtyard, whilst there is an abundance of empty studio space already in Norwich. The idea of putting a shower into such a unit makes me wonder if the owners have not entirely given up on their idea of pushing for another residential unit in the future. There is already concern about the overuse of the old drainage system and the effects of the St Peter's development are yet to be known. And all my neighbours are concerned about this. Thank you. Thank you very much. One more thing, Councillor Carlo. You have three minutes as well, thank you. Well, thank you very much, Chair. Yes, I'm just going to speak very briefly because I am here to endorse the objections raised by, by many neighbours in Maida Vale. Um, I objected to this application as a ward councillor as well. I objected to an earlier application for a two bedroom house in the yard. Um, and then I've objected to the application for the commercial unit on the, on the um, garage site. Firstly, my grounds are grounds of site intensification with three separate uses to be created on one small site, a separate HMO of three beds, a cafe and restaurant, and now a commercial unit. I also object on grounds of the impact on amenity. The site is in a very prominent location um, in a conservation area. It's at the top of um, Avenue Road, which is a, a big hill, and it's very visible from a number of uh, roads, from, from Park Lane, from Avenue Road and from Portersfield Road. And uh, the back of the site is, is, is very visible from, from quite a, a wide angle. In relation to the impact on amenity, the DM, policy DM2 states that development will only be permitted where it A, provides for a high standard of amenity, satisfactory living and working conditions, adequate protection from noise and pollution, and adequate levels of light and outlook for future <coughs> occupiers. And B, such a standard can be achieved and maintained without preventing or unreasonably restricting the continued operation of established authorised uses and activities on adjacent sites. And, and B in particular, well both A and B apply to this particular yard. The yard currently provides theoretically outdoor amenity space for the HMO and the cafe. Add in a third use, a commercial unit, and the area of outdoor space would be even smaller and dominated by bins. It would give very little room for the cafe to set out tables and chairs as the previous cafe leaseholder had done. The application states that the garage has no discernible use other than as an incidental storage and yard, but using it to store bins and cycles would free up space for outdoor amenity. Or else the garage could be knocked down and purpose-built bins and cycle storage created in its place. And as um, uh, the speakers have noticed this morning, the, the first application didn't include any bin or storage space and so the caseworker requested additional information. But when that was provided, the, the neighbours were not informed, unfortunately, and so they weren't able to comment. But the bin storage shown is inadequate. Just, just bit four bins are shown, but these are used by the HMO. But you also have to add in, in the bins of the cafe and indeed the commercial unit. 
and the um, the storage, the cycle storage is is, is totally inadequate as well. It's just um, a narrow strip of um, 90 centimetres wide. I did comment on the parking, and that's because the um, county council had noted that the business was entitled to on-street parking permits. But in fact, the, um, the, the planning officer this morning tells me that in fact that's not the case. But this is a, a, a location of, of huge parking chaos uh, because there's um, repeated unlawful parking around the double yellow lines. Um, anyway, thank you very much for, for listening. Thank you, Cash Carlo. Uh, the last speaker was the agent, David Chul, and, and you have six minutes. Thank you. Hello, uh, just as a, um, a matter of just clarification, first of all, um, the applicant, applicant has absolutely no intention at all of allowing the external area to be used as a licensed space. I've uh, made that quite clear. Um, there seems to be a lot of um, misinformation being spread in regards to this application. Anyway, um, in simple terms, the proposal itself is based purely around the removal of an existing redundant and dilapidated garage feature, replacing it with a more functional, neutrally finished, and more aesthetic pleasing and practical structure. And that will improve the visual and viable attributes of rather bland and nondescript corner plot that currently provides no physical or visual asset to value or value to the immediate locality. I think at this point it might be useful to address the issues raised as matters of concern and contained within the officer's report in order that, to ensure that all concerns are addressed above and beyond the responses contained within the case assessment section. Firstly, the concern with regards to parking and measures to mitigate any concern. The building is um, a small, the proposed building is a small scale unit, not much larger than the existing garage, with a proposed usage as a professional type of studio or office for a single trader or startup business. And as such, it is not expected to generate any undue traffic movement in and around the site in terms of staff, deliveries, or collections. Also, the outer centre and sustainable location of the site and its proximity to public transport networks along both Unthank and Earlham Road will advocate the use of public transport, walking, and cycling. It's not intended to apply for any type of parking permit as part of this proposal, and it should be noted that there is also little to no expectation that the usage of the office or studio will create any, any vehicle or pedestrian traffic by extending beyond the, the, um, the junction with Maida Vale. In light of this, it would be, I'd kindly of request that Commission members do not deliberate on further concerns raised with regards to the, the presumptions of illegal parking being exacerbated by this small scale proposal. The applicant is happy to accept that, subject to approval, the usage of the site is conditioned appropriately to pay the use of as a residential dwelling in order to ensure that the parking and mitigating circumstances are mentioned are maintained. With regards to construction phase traffic and the construction phase management plan, the objective has indicated that the lack of such a plan is indicative of the fact that there is not enough room for this development in the narrow street of Maida Vale and in the built or residential area which I think, again, is a fairly presumptuous assumption, notwithstanding that construction management plans are usually subject to condition and not normally part of a planning application. However, in order to clarify this matter and to lay any due concerns, the proposed structure is largely of a modular panel format. The wall panels are lifted individually into place on a small flatbed lorry with a lorry HIAB crane, meaning that there is no excessive site material storage and no requirement for multiple materials, material deliveries as would be anticipated for a traditional build process. This process means that the panels can be delivered on site on a required basis. Delivered deliveries that are required will be programmed in and unloaded from the extended width pavement along the, the Avenue Road northern elevation, thus leaving made available clear of any construction affiliated traffic. It is noted that concern has also been raised with regards to a wide range of uses afforded within the Class C usage category, and suggestions made that the building might be used for excessively loud activities such as drumming or metalworking, etc. I can assure the committee that there has never been any intention or desire to use this building as such, and once again the client will be more than happy to have this incorporated to any approval as a condition. Mm -hmm. It should perhaps be reiterated at this point that the building is intended as a professional or startup business premises tending more towards quieter business aspects of a classy use. The building, although not, admittedly not a residential building, can only be described in commercial to, as a commercial building in its very loosest terms due to its size, nature and small-scale mm -hmm. usage. However, it is doubtful that the building could be described as not in style in keeping with a conservation area. There are, is ample precedence that commercial type properties operate on corner plots within the vicinity and are not considered as damaging to the area, namely Moorish, which is a cafe on the Park Lane Avenue Road corner, Mr Pizza on the corner of Portsfield Road and Warwick Street, and indeed the Garden House pub on the corner of Denby Road and Pembroke Road, to name but a few. 
It might be suggested that the current appearance and usage of the existing corner plot is more at odds with the character of the area. Either way, the location of a corner plot in relation to Maida Vale itself prescribes that there will be no negligible aspect on the secluded area of Maida Vale, as no additional traffic, pedestrian or vehicular, would be generated by constructing construction of the usage of that site. With regards to the existing red brick wall, which has been raised, and as noted earlier, the wall to be site boundary is, is in very poor condition and will have to be taken down and rebuilt at some point in the next two to three years at any event. And this is according to an independent structural engineer who visited the site last year. The existing wall is approximately 1.8 metres high and the wall on the opposite side of Maida Vale is approximately only 615 millimetres, which is two thirds less than the site boundary wall and is of a much darker brickwork, providing an incongruous and non-symmetrical feature to the access of Maida Vale from Avenue Road. It is proposed to retain the lower elements of the existing wall up to a height of approximately 1.1 metres towards the corner of Maida Vale, which if anything would make the brickwork feature along the sides of Maida Vale more symmetrical in height. Also, and as shown on the proposed elevation drawings, the rebuilt building, the rebuilt building wall that spans the length and height of replacement structure would utilise the same facing brick as the existing, using salvage and existing bricks as required or possible. The lowered and rebuilt brickwork would also add to a more visually interesting aspect to the entrance to Maida Vale. Bearing in mind that the point raised by the objector with regards to the modern character of the altered wall, and as noted, the materials to be used are in fact retained and reused existing facing brickwork. The UPVC fit windows at high level, they are slot windows that form a very small, small part of the Maida Vale elevation and have been designed to be a subtle and discrete element of the overall appearance of the elevation. With regards to bin storage and the allocation of the bins, this has been covered off quite well clearly within the officer's report and is shown on the site plan drawings. But just to reiterate, the bins will allow for the required needs of other users and a separate and, and private usage of bins for all users of the new unit. The nature and type of the usage would indicate that the likelihood of toxic contamination and disposal of toxic waste within the allocated bin storage areas is highly unlikely on a scale that is perhaps being suggested. Bins will be clearly marked in terms of the type of refuse or waste, recycling or otherwise, and to whom the bin is allocated. The matter raised with regards to the existing outdoor space and the, more, and the valuable amenity it provides for local residents as an extension to the cafe, now Moorish, is something that should be clarified as there seems to be some degree of confusion here. The outdoor area in question is actually in the ownership of the applicant along with the cafe as alluded to. Permission for incidental usage of the outdoor cafe area, outdoor area was given to the previous cafe tenants as a favour to accompany the business at the time, not as a legal right. The actual community value in terms of regular usage does not equate with the term valuable, with the term valuable amenity for local residents. The reduction of height of the boundary wall and the subsequent planting of the area will provide a far more open, aesthetic, pleasing and accessible environment and may still be used as an attribute to the local new tenants of the cafe subject to agreement with the site owner and applicant. We firmly believe that the current application will provide a positive improvement to the immediate locality by regenerating and improving the sustainability and viability of a somewhat underused site that lies in a prominent location in a vibrant and diverse neighbourhood. We also believe that the target of concerns raised in objections to the proposal offers no concrete, sustainable or valid grounds for refusing the application and would therefore request that the committee members vote to approve the application accordingly. Thank you. Emma, did you want to come back on any questions? Thank you. Yeah, just a few bits, if that's okay. Um, so I just want to clear, clarify um, any uh, um, any reference within the report about um, other uses, uh, potentially a little bit misleading, I'll be honest. Um, and and it would it, the intention that the condition recommended um, would would restrict the use to office only. So. Um, just, just to clear up any confusion about potential uses for the site. Um, the, regarding the two-week consultation, uh, the, the additional consultation with neighbours, um, our, our records show that 60 neighbours were consulted on the 3rd of December for two weeks um, and that, that we didn't receive any response um, to those um, letters. Um, the refuse storage um, if, if members are so minded, we could we could um, agree to uh, impose a condition which requires those details to be agreed um, within this within this application. Um, I think there's sufficient space within the yard there to accommodate it, but potentially um, the the plan that we've got before us is isn't perfect, and and we could um, we could do better uh, by a condition. 
Um, and then just one last thing, which is the um, restrictive covenant, which is raised by the Norwich Society um, uh, relating to that wall, uh, shouldn't have any bearing on, on planning decisions. Restrictive covenants are a separate matter that, um, that, that, that we can't take into account under this process. Thank you. We move on to questions. Any questions? Anyone? Councillor Sands? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, is it possible that we can go back and have a look at the photograph of the existing building and the um, house next door? I do have a question. Is this one? Uh, is this one? There was one where the, there was a car in the way, wasn't there? Yeah, ah. is this one? yeah that's the one. Um, is that uh, front door I see there, is that part of uh, resident on Maid of Al or is that part of the building? That's part of one made available. Right, okay. Um, now, there's obviously a party wall. Um, is there any provision in the proposed construction to provide added, perhaps, sound insulation between the proposed construction and the existing dwelling? So, shall I answer that? No, you can't. Okay. So, the, we, we haven't required that via planning um, at this stage. Um, party wall, a party wall agreement would need to be entered into in order to um, agree the construction of that wall um, between the two owners, um, but, but we haven't um, agreed any sound insulation within the planning application, no. Just, just, to, just to add to that, the um, noise, noise insulation requirements would normally be covered by the building regs where it's two different uses next to each other. In other words, it, it can be provided for, yes. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if you could show us any pictures you have again from the inside of the yard, so I can get. I'm, I'm afraid it's not very clear. <laughs> I don't. I'm not. I can't make out what is where and where the existing garage is. And so, so and a related question to that is: um, so there is an existing entrance to the yard. Is that right? So why is why is it then proposed that they uh, that they that they create a new pedestrian entrance um, through the wall. Yeah, so apologies that we haven't got the best photos in front of us. Um, let me just explain a little bit about the layout of this, um, the, the, the rear yard here. So this is the ground floor of the cafe um, of 81 Park Lane. There are some steps there which, which we can see in that photo there. Um, steps that lead down from this door into the rear yard. The existing garage is in this location here, set behind this higher bit of, um, of wall, um, set into the corner, essentially in the location that the proposed single storey building um, is. The, um, uh, I've forgotten your second question. Ah, yes. Um, yeah, so it, that's, just, that's just been something that the applicant has been keen to include. Um, we have spoken to them about whether they want to take that out because it's causing um, neighbours some concern about the um, availability of car parking along this wall, um, but, but they've been keen to keep it in. Uh, we don't think that it, it's necessarily going to cause an issue in terms of um, car parking because it's not a vehicular access, um, so, so we've, we've sort of allowed them to keep it in, but that's just been their personal preference. Thank you. Any yes, Sandra? Can I, can I just get an understanding of how much the footprint will increase? Um, so I don't know if you can point that out on this plan or or inside. I I know it's on yeah or or maybe within the, within the plans of the new um, of the proposed building. If you could just show what is currently occupied by the garage, so I can get a, a sense of. Okay, so this is the proposed plan. Um, the existing garage runs uh, across most of the same footprint. I believe it is attached to this building here, um, so it potentially ha has um, it has some attachment along this wall, um, and then uh, runs. Um, I think this wall here is being moved slightly closer to the existing building, um, so the existing garage is probably more like this shape. Councillor Graham. Thank 
you. I wanted to ask about the letter which one party says they've sent and another party says they haven't received. So what happened it to it and where did it go and what was in it? <laughs> So a two a two week consultation was uh, took place. Uh, an additional public consultation took place between the third and the seventeenth of December. Um, the the consultation took place because we had received this plan that you can see before you, um, which details refuse storage and cycle storage, which we hadn't we did which were details we didn't previously have, um, and they were issues that had been raised by objectors. Um, so so we thought it necessary to. Um, give neighbours the opportunity to see this plan and provide comment on it. Um, the, I mean, our, our records show that 60 letters were sent out on the 3rd of, of December. Neighbours report that they haven't received those letters. I, I can't, I can't um, <coughs> explain the reason for them not having seen those letters, but um, we sent the letters out. That, that's, I, I, can't, um, I can't give any more information than that, I'm afraid. Okay, thank you. If there are no more questions, we'll move the recommendation, which is to approve. I'll move that. We've got a second now, thank you. And we move on to discussion. Councillor Graham, did you want to come in? Thank you, yes. Um, I also wondered if the. Um, we, we've heard that the garage, the new garage, is only going to be a little bit bigger than the existing one. Um, but a small expansion in a small space makes quite, seems to make quite a significant difference to the amount of amenity provided by the yard. Um, and I'm a bit concerned about that, particularly in terms of overdevelopment um, and, um, and bin storage. Um, and the other point I wanted to raise was about sound. So if the um, if the application were to get approval, I'm wondering if we can um, condition in a bit more about sound uses than what we have already, um, like no loud late uses or something like that. Yeah, that was more of a question than discussion, actually. Yeah, but we will answer. I think it would be difficult to necessarily control the types of uses because we've already got that condition restricting it to office uses which are administrative, quiet, sort of computer desk based activities. Um, so I think the condition that we've, that we've proposed sort of um, does that job. Um, the, uh, but, but what we could do is we could control the hours of use of the, of the unit um, if, members, if members were minded to do so. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have to say, I went to have a look at this yesterday. Um, quite difficult at the moment because all the roads are closed off, so I had to park up and walk. And I cannot, I, I, I've got to say, I would probably vote for this because I cannot see anything there that would make me want to turn it down. I, I think it's. Uh, We've got the drawings. I was a bit annoyed that when I got home last night, I got yet another um, in email, which um, takes you ages to read, and um, you don't really want to be doing that at 10 o'clock at night. Thank you. Councillor Bevo. Okay. Anyone, anyone else? Councillor Stewart. Check Yeah. I just want to say that um, this was a, the email that was sent by a resident, yeah. so it wasn't part of the committee papers, just no, to make that clear. Okay? Yeah, yeah. and, and that's still very long. Councillor Stewart. Thank you, Chair. May I have a question that's just occurred to me? Please, thank you. Um, uh, should the uh, committee turn this down? Um, we've heard that the, uh, the wall may need to be repaired um, anyway. Uh, should that be the case, um, would the um, uh, the applicant be required to replace the wall like for like? The restriction, there are no particular restrictions on that wall other than that it's in a conservation area. Um, so the there would be no control that we would necessarily have on the bricks or, or, or anything that we used. Um, the only thing they wouldn't be able to do was to make it taller. Councillor Peake? Yeah, 
I passed that building quite a lot, going to work, on the way to work that is, and uh, I think myself that there is enough air in there just to, for the garage just to be expanded slightly, so I'll be voting for it. Okay, if there's no more discussion, uh, we've got Councillor Bergline and then Councillor Stewart. Um, I, I do I do worry that is I don't know is the term intensification so a, a, a too intense use for the space we have given that there will be three separate um, separate uses and I'm sorry but I've, I've come across another question saying this and um, there was mentioning that there is a licensing application for the use of the space outdoors could you just clarify where that is? I'm afraid I don't have any information on that. I'm not. I, I wasn't aware of the license application or the areas that it relates to. Um, but as we know, planning permission and licensing don't always go hand in hand, and, and this planning permission wouldn't have any impact on that, and vice versa. Yeah. So, so for me, it's, it's it is uh, it is finely balanced because I, I probably don't see as much of an issue with regards to parking as, as might be perceived. But I do think there is a problem of too much in too little space and too many different uses, which is probably also reflected in you know, concerns around bin storage and things like that. Um, so I, and I do think 18 square meters increased to 29 is, you know, is, is a one-third increase. It's not, it's not nothing. So, um, on balance, I'm minded to vote against it, but I, I keep, I'm keep. i going to continue hearing discussion and then make up my mind. Councillor Stewart. Um, yeah, just uh, uh, for clarity, the, um, the licensee withdrew their um, application for the outside space during the application for the main, uh, for the main uh, cafe building. Um, just that clarification, and for me, this is this is quite finely balanced for the same reasons, actually, as Councillor Vogelheim explained. I think um, I think it's um, potentially uh, just oversized, um, and, um, and for that reason, I'm minded to vote against. Um, but like I say, it is finely balanced, and the um, the use of the space currently um, is is. Um, twofold, this will in increase it significantly. And we've heard a lot of detail about other matters, uh, which I don't think are uh, necessarily relevant, but I think the size and the uh, representation from Norwich Society uh, does, uh, uh, for me, uh, it uh, balances it in favour, uh, sorry, uh, um, to reject. Thank you. Okay, if there's no other discussion... Uh, Chair, sorry, could I just interject? Um, hey, yes. There's, um, before you move to the vote, Lara's mentioned two additional conditions. Uh, one about, uh, one to secure final uh, further details of the refuse storage, and one about limiting the hours of use of the, um, uh, of, of the building. Um, and I just want, wanted to be clear whether or not the committee wanted those to be attached to um, any consent that may be granted. The other thing that I did want to mention, um, which is arising from the um, questions about the use of the courtyard, um, is you could put a condition on saying that, because you're kind of looking at the, this as a planning unit with kind of three uses in it, the residential, the cafe, and this, this office use, it would be legitimate of you to kind of attach a condition saying that that courtyard space should not be used for setting out of tables and chairs in association with the cafe use because there's obviously an issue, a material planning issue about how the three uses interact on the site. So Lara's already talked about three, uh, two conditions, hours of use of the office, further details of refuse. I'm suggesting that the committee may also want to attach a further condition um, which restricts the use of the courtyard and, and would prevent it, prevent the cafe use from using it for tables and chairs. Just wanted to put that um, to the to, to committee. Okay, now did you want to come in now? You want us, no? Well, I've got Councillor Studio and Councillor Bergen. Um, yes, thank you. Um, thank you for those suggestions. Um, just in case the committee is minded to vote in favour, I would like to suggest that there is a 
um, uh, restriction on the on the hours uh, of use. Um, and my suggestion would be um, uh, um, the same as the cafe, which I believe is eight to eight. Um, uh, but somebody can confirm that because my memory escapes me. Um, I'm I'm not sure about the other condition to um, to prevent the use of the courtyard because. Um, um, there's no reason why the courtyard couldn't be used by the cafe um, and um, conditioned by licensing to ensure uh, mitigation of noise. Uh, so I wouldn't support that. Yes, yeah, I agree that the first two conditions that were suggested, if the committee is like is, is going to vote for this, would be a good idea. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I'm not entirely sure about the third suggested conditions about the restriction. In many ways, I would probably prefer this to be used better by the cafe rather than introduce, introducing a third use. Right. Can I just come back on the comments about um, the, 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 I mean, it, it's entirely up to the committee, but I think one thing that licensing wouldn't be able to consider is, is the physical layout um, of, 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 of the space and whether there was sufficient space to, to accommodate tables and chairs and the, the bins and bike storage associated with this use. Um, so that would be out, out with licensing. It wasn't just about the noise generated by use of the, uh, of the courtyard. Councillor Button. Uh, sorry, Chair, I just wanted to clarify something that I thought I heard earlier, that the yard space is actually in the ownership of the people who own the, ga the garage and that the space was given as a favour to the use by the cafe? So my understanding is that the whole site is owned by the applicants um, and that they have leases for different areas of the site. Um, the cafe use does not include that, that yard um, within their lease. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, does not include that. But um, at, in previous years they have um, granted them access to, to using that for tables and chairs um, and not, not at the moment. Okay, uh, Councillor Graham. Thank you. I agree it's finely balanced and I'd want to support the creative use of space and limiting the hours is a good way of meeting all needs. I'm not sure how we can accommodate conditioning more space for bin storage when there physically isn't more space. Um, and in terms of tables and chairs outside, we're in a pandemic. It seems really important that cafes can offer the option of outdoor dining, so I wouldn't support that condition. Um, it remains finely balanced, but on balance, I think it's over intensive for that space and would like to see something that leaves a bit more yard space and a bit more proportion. Okay, I can hear what people are saying. I'm going to put the first two recommendations in, leave the other one out unless anyone's got any strong views about putting that in. No, so is that agreed, committee? Well, can we have a seconder, please? Yes, can we have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Maxwell. And are all members in favour? Are we all in favour? Is anyone against? Can we just be more explicit as to what the recommendations are? Yep. David or Lara? So the recommendations are the conditions that we have included within our report um, and also additional um, conditions that we've discussed today. That, uh, they are to agree refuse storage, notwithstanding the details that are shown on this plan. And secondly, to restrict the hours. Um, Councillor Stutley has um, has muted the idea of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. as the hours, um, but we would need to agree that yeah. amongst ourselves as well. Okay, so we're moving to the recommendation. The recommendation is to approve. All those in favour? Are we, so with the additional? Yes, with yeah. the conditions. Yeah. All those in favour, please show. Chair, it is a recorded vote. Um, Councillor Peak, Councillor Driver, Councillor Giles, Councillor Button, Councillor Everett, Councillor Maxwell, Councillor Sands, and Councillor Thomas. All those against? 
Those members voting against are Councillors Graham, Councillor Champion, Councillor Vogelein, and Studley, sorry. Thank you, that's everyone. Uh, that means it's been approved. Thank you. Can I suggest that we have a, a five minute break and then come back and take all these. Uh, what's in? Thank you, we want for 10 minutes. Thank you.
24C, which is a um, tele telecom replacing film boxes to advertising. I think that's what it really is. Um, and I'm just going to take you through this because Jacob's uh, off again. Oh, no. oh, Lara, sorry. <laughs> okay, Jamie, that's Lara. Thank you. Okay, so uh, the next three items that we've got on the agenda, they relate to the same form of development um, in three different locations around the city. Um, and there are, just to make things extra confusing, there are two applications for each of those locations. So we've got a full planning application and an application for advertisement consent. Um, so we'll consider each location in turn and then we will vote on the two, applica the two applications that relate to that location. The first, um, the first proposal relates to a site on Plumstead Road, um, close to a parade of, of shops and a bus stop here. These are elevations showing um, the, the proposed structure. Um, the proposal is to replace an existing phone box uh, with a new BT street hub. Um, the street hubs stand at three metres tall, uh, 1.2 metres wide and uh, 0.3 metres deep. So they're sort of thin stands uh, with illuminated digital adverts on each side. Um, each advert is displayed for a minimum of 10 seconds. The hubs also provide free Wi-Fi, USB ports for charging, free phone calls, um, direct 999 calls. Um, and display of public messaging and also they each provide um, environmental sensors for air quality, noise and traffic. We can see the site here, um, so this is the existing phone box and that's the bus shelter just beyond. It, here is a parade of shops and this is looking from the opposite direction. So you can see the bus stop here, parade of shops on your right, and the phone uh, box, the existing phone box just there. So on this plan, you can see uh, the existing phone box outlined with a little dashed line and a little green box showing the location of the uh, proposed street hub. These are some visuals showing the existing phone box on the left and the proposed replacement with uh, the street hub. Uh, we've received a number of objections um, which relate to general visual clutter, sort of general comments on visual clutter and the impact on pedestrian mobility, um, as well as the impact on heritage um, uh, within the historic city. Um, we've, we've discussed the application with highways who are, who are happy with the impact um, of, of the proposed screen on um, highway safety um, and because it's in, the, in the, the location of an existing phone box it doesn't, it doesn't impact on pedestrian mobility in this case um, and obviously the um, pavement is very wide at this point anyway. Uh, both applications for this site are recommended for approval subject to conditions recommended within the report. Thank you. Questions, anyone? Councillor Maxwell. Um, Jay, um, can you see uh, that behind there, there is a no right turn um, at the circle. This is where it's the entrance to the uh, supermarket. Um, it's very dangerous because people said they can't see it. And I think this, this uh, actually will block it up it, out even more. Um, we have a lot, lot of complaints about near misses, and somebody was knocked over there. When they did the road, they didn't paint no right turn on the road, so that's the only indication that you can't turn into the supermarket. So could we put? I mean, I'm not objecting to the phone box, but this is possibly going to bring um, problems for people who are turning in. Could, could that be um, put forward to them? I know it's I know it's a county council matter. I think the, the your, your suggestion that, that that sign is is made more prominent is, is that your suggestion? Yeah. Um, it, I mean that would be have to, that would have to be carried out by county council yeah. um, highway authority. Um, they have 
the highway authority have viewed each of these applications and provided comments where they're not happy with things, um, which means that they haven't actually commented on this application, but they have they have assessed all of them um, um, for impact on highway safety. Um, they haven't raised that issue, although I, pre I appreciate what you're saying. I don't think, uh, I mean, the unit's not much higher than the existing phone box, so there's unlikely to be a significant difference to the, um, to the visibility of that sign. Uh, but I, pre I appreciate what you're saying, and it might be something that the highway authority wants to do separately um, to make to make that junction safer. Okay, well, I'll get, I'll get our county councillor to take it up. Thank okay. you. Uh, now, this is obviously something that I haven't dealt with before. Applications like that, so um, I might, you know, but so so we've got two. One is the application for the actual the actual thing. And the other one is the application for there being anything displayed or advertisement in particular is my first question. And then my second question is that uh, I've looked at very briefly where other councils have looked at these kind of um, structures and there's concerns being raised around some of the functions of it. Some of it is, is relevant to here but the, some of it is probably more relevant to the one like directly in the city centre. So one of the issues that the police has reported is that hoax calls from the 999 function have significantly increased after they uh, have been built in other locations. So I was wondering whether the police had any concerns with regards to that. And the second one is like, I mean, it's, it sounds really odd, but um, but that that in, in locations where drug dealing is an issue, the free 30-second phone call has been used as a very convenient way of organizing drop-offs. So I was wondering whether there's any, uh, whether there's anything um, around that um, any any kind of concerns that have been raised or any opinions on that? Okay, so for, so responding to your first point, uh, there are yes, there are two types of application here. So we've got the full application, which is for the structure itself, and then we've got the ad, uh, advertisement application, which is for the two digital screens on either side. Those they can display. Um, any form of advertising, the contents that uh, of those adverts is not controlled um, within this application. Um, although we have recommended some conditions which um, limit the, the speed at which the adverts can change from one to another to um, help with immediacy impacts and distraction to highway users. Um, so that's the first point. Um, sec second and third point sort of go together, which is the, the, um, the, the function of the unit and um, any sort of antisocial behaviour that might um, occur as a result of the free facilities that are on offer. Um, they, the, the applicant is obvious, it ha has obviously um, implemented these at many locations around the country and um, has a uh, antisocial behaviour management plan that they've submitted to us which aims to control those sorts of uses um, the the um, the use of the uh, of the free phone calls is quite well monitored um, and and can be reported to the police um, that they work closely with the police to, to ensure that, that those things are not happening or if they are that the that BT are, are as helpful as they can be in, um, in, in assisting in any inquiries um, beyond that the uh, the replacement of a phone box which might also equally be um, misused um, and, and actually has a sort of small private area in which um, uh, antisocial behaviour often occurs, the replacement with something which is much more open um, potentially could be seen to actually reduce antisocial behaviour. Um, sorry, just a final question. Um, so how can I, so we've obviously all voted um, for the ad free motion. Um, very recently. How does that now sit within our policies? Um, as I understand it, the, the, the motion, well, f first of all, in terms of the adverts, the motion was about uh, was, was mainly on our land um, and, and adverts that we, and, and, and who we chose to interact with as a council um, um, in, in terms of providing advertising. In terms of a regulatory function, from in, in terms of the planning applications committee, what what is displayed as an advert is not a material consideration because you only have two things that you can take into account when when you are determining determining an application for for, for advertisement consent. You can only take into account the impact on highway safety 
for this, the first item, and the second item is the impact upon amenity. So, um, th th those are the only th those are the only two things. So, the, the light and um, the any, any noise that the thing might make if it's changing. I don't know, if there was a mechanical mechanism or where the light shone in, into residential properties, for example, that would be amenity, as would the general impact upon the street scene in terms of cluster and stuff like that. If it advertised something that we as a council found um, disagreeable um, for, for, for some reason, we, we, we as a planning applications committee could not you as planning applications committee could not actually take that into account. So it, it, it will be anything uh, on, on these that they can sell space for and it will advertise whatever they can uh, actually get um, get clients for. So the, the, as, as I said, the, the motion about, about that, the, the council motion about the adverse is, and, and in terms of what gets advertised is primarily about um, who we choose to engage with as advertisers on our buildings. Sales. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, a couple of points, and they relate to sort of the safety of both motorists and also pedestrian users. Looking at the uh, existing and proposed um, uh, edifice, it is somewhat higher, and I can see as a motorist coming on that road, it would obscure the uh, turn right sign. Also, people using it are quite close to the edge of the road. The footpath looks quite wide to me. Is there any reason why the uh, edifice couldn't be moved three metres away from the um, edge of the road, closer to where the asphalt turns into concrete? I mean, to me, it would make sense. I think relates regarding the um, the visibility of this sign. It might be something that we. I'm Jacob was the case officer before me on this, and I'm not sure whether he's had specific um, conversations with the highway authority about that. I haven't got any record of it, but it might be something that the members wish to send us away to to have that conversation, um, so that we can make sure that they have noticed that the potential. Um, obstruction of the sign and and are comfortable that that, that doesn't cause any any issues in highway safety terms um, I, I'd be happy to have that conversation with the highway authority um, regarding moving it um, in this direction I'm not sure that that would make an awful lot of difference because um, I think in this case the phone is intended to be on this side of the unit um, so they so users would be sort of standing here, or, or was your was your point um, with re, re, regard to the obstruction of that sign? Um, oops, both. Uh, I, I, we do hear uh, rare occasions when cars mount footpaths and take out um, uh, phone boxes. Um, um, it's conceivable that this very expensive item, it, it could conceivably happen at some stage in the future, I'm not anti anticipating that it would, but it strikes me as it would be far better all round, both for the visibility of the existing sign and for the general safety of um, anyone standing around using it, that it was just three metres further away from the road. It, it, it makes perfect common sense to me. Okay, any more questions? Anyone, Councillor Stoodley? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, does the um, uh, existence of the original phone box there uh, also come with planning permission for advertising? It looks like there, there appears to have been some sort of advertising on the side of it, and therefore, could they already um, uh, put up whatever advertising is, is legally acceptable? Yes, there would be there would be um, the ability for them to display adverts within the phone box, as you sometimes do see. Um, it wouldn't necessarily be digital screens uh, like we're seeing here. Um, there are very complicated advert regs that set out what you can and can't do without um, express consent from us. Um, but digital screens such as those proposed here certainly wouldn't be included in what they could do without our consent. Okay, okay, but uh, to confirm, they do currently have advertising consent there. 
so for, for just, display ads. So just, um, they don't necessarily need it because there, there are, within the advert regs, there is a provision, provided a structure is designed to accommodate adverts, such as potentially a phone box or indeed a bus, a bus shelter. They don't need express consent from the council for adverts, provided that they're not illuminated. So um, if the phone box was um, used to display adverts in, then provided they weren't illuminated, they, they, they wouldn't necessarily require advert consent from us. Okay, so this application is specifically because it will be illuminated in an electronic form of advertising. Yeah, well, no, 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 because there's, 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 the, the advert regulations are, are very complicated. If, if, if a piece of street furniture, the, 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 this, this, this thing, this, this um, street hub, it has an, an intent to, this, this part of its specific design is, is primary design is, is to display adverts, it's, or it, it, its function, or whatever functions as a phone thing it retains are almost incidental, it's primarily an advert uh, as a structure to display adverts. B, BT can put up um, telephone boxes and they can display adverts on them without either planning permission or advert consent. Um, so they're obviously moving away from providing telephone boxes because they're not making money from them. They'll get more of an advert, but they'll, they'll get more of a revenue stream from um, from these hubs. Um, but because they are primarily adverts, they need advert consent and initially um, um, they, they will need planning permission. They're a bit like billboards in a sense. You get on the side of the road, strictly speaking, you need planning permission for the structure and you need an advert consent for whatever you display on it. Um, but when you change the advert, you don't need to then come back and get an ad, um, a consent for each, each brand new advert. Um, okay, thank you very much. It sounds much like my phone, which has just basically become adverts. Councillor um, Chen. So, in a similar way, it is like on um, your phone, except with your phone, you voluntarily have. Um, given away, so if I sign up to Facebook, I voluntarily give away my data. Is this the surveillance technology which is going to be incorporated with this? Is that being taken into consideration? I'm not sure what you mean. Sorry. So when you say surveillance technology. The, 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 there's, a, there's a USB hub. Um, there's a, the, so there's charging. There's I'm referring to um, personal data of anyone who's using a BT hub, which I believe is outsourced. I believe they're using a Google subsidiary to install this technology. And so anyone using this technology, are they going to be aware that they're giving their data to a private corporation? Is that, I mean, I'm just curious if that's been taken into any kind of consideration here. Um, I think the answer to that is no, because um, there's, that, that's the, the activities of whatever the provider are with, with, with information that they're able to extract from, um, the, the, they kind of happen at a layer back from the, the structure and the advert, because um, we, 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 as a regulatory committee, you have no control over how a particular business provider operates. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the short answer to your question is, is, is no, the, the business model of, um, of whoever is supporting the um, provision of the facilities has not been taken into account. Um, if I could ask a further question. Um, with regards, so the company's product statement um, states that they would like to anticipate introducing sensors that anonymously monitor things like air quality, um, pedestrian movement, tra traffic movement, environmental factors like light and sound. If they were to introduce such measures, would the council be able to access this information to inform our own decision making? Has that been taken into consideration? I believe they would, and and I, that would be that would be the reason that they're taking those um, measurements so that they can make best use of, of the um, of the of the structure um, that, they're, that they're putting in um, and that forms one of a, of a list of, of, um, 
benefits of the scheme, which are all quite minor in nature, but, but ultimately um, do offer some public benefit to, to, um, to the scheme. Is there any way of making a condition that if there was such data gathered or that we would request such data gathered? It does strikes to me, I mean, I quite like calling it a monolith, I quite like that terminology, but is there public good, you know, other than just having a, you know, I mean, because I'm not a big fan of having a big advertisement, you know, digital advertisement, but if there was public good to outweigh this advertisement, then I'd be in favour, but and I would want some guarantees that we could get some of this data for our own use. I'm, I'm not sure that we could request that. Um, no, I'm, I'm not either. Are we absolutely certain? Are, are those things going in from the start, or is it just a potential? I believe, I believe they are. Um, sorry. We could wait in National if we tea again. <laughs> I mean, we, yeah, yeah. In, in the, the, I think they're two slightly different issues. The, the, the kind of collection of data from from a uh, the, from Wi-Fi and stuff is a different issue to the collection of da data from within the mach machine. Um, I mean, if members felt that there was so, uh, there was that there was the, 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 the harm caused by the structure could be outweighed to, in, in to some extent by um, access to the information that it collected in terms of the public environment, traffic flow, um, pedestrian flows, uh, air quality and whatnot, then, then legitimately you, you, you could require a provider <coughs> to, to, to give access to that information. Um, I, as a planning officer, would suggest, well, it's, it, it's, it's a balance. I mean, we, we're not recommending a condition to that effect, but if members felt that the, the, the harm caused was outweighed, uh, by, at least in part, by access to this information, then, then yeah, you could put a condition on saying that we, could, we should have access to it as a local planning authority. Councilor Mitchell. I'm sorry to go back to this, but I've suddenly realised that when you're going towards that in a car, it's okay if you're in a higher vehicle. Um, you would be seen at extreme level and your eye would be taken by the adverts and you wouldn't see the side of the So can we, have, can we refer it back to ask if it could be compromised and moved, as uh, council next to me said? I'm, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with it because we've had so many near misses when we've we've not had anything blocking it. Well, you have the telephone box. Uh, yeah, but it's not as high. Look at the height. It's much higher. Yeah, and if you're looking at it from this level, and you're looking up. Well, I'll, I'll, well personally, I, well, that's something for discussion, not question. No. Sorry, just for clarification, I think we probably need to understand the approach that the Highways Authority has taken to commenting on these, because they, there is another application on, on the agenda where they have provided specific comment. But as I understood it, Laura, from the presentation and your response, that they, they've, they've not responded to those applications where they don't have a problem with it. So in terms of highway safety, um, the, 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 the county council has doesn't have doesn't have an issue with the proposal. This is a council who we're trying to get them to put the, the, the um, no right turn back on the floor. It was it was in great big letters, you know, and they, and then when they did some um, repairs over a year ago, we're still trying to get them to put that don't turn right. And there has been so many um, people near misses and we've had a child knocked over. Um, and it, it's in the public safety that we, we should go back to them and ask them to clarify this. Uh, Councillor Sands. Sorry, Chair, can I just come, come, yeah. come, come back on that? I mean, we, we could, if, 
defer the item and go back to county and ask them to clarify their position on highway safety. Um, but and, and raise the specific point about the obscuring the right turn lane because I mean I, I can see the point that is being made. The structure is higher than the phone box, so it could potentially obscure the right no right turn symbol in a way that the current phone box doesn't. Um, obviously they may come back and say, well that's fine, we don't we still don't have a problem with it, but then at, at least then you've got a specific response to that specific element. Well then it'll be there for instead of ours. <laughs> no, seriously, this is really difficult. Can we just have a word with Mike Stanley and the executive will sign up for it? All right. Councilor Sue. Um, I, I think there's a good point being made here, actually, because this might be something that um, highways have simply missed, because um, you can clearly see from that that there's already an obstruction in front of this sign, um, and uh, the new uh, structure will uh, obscure that even further, and it might just be that some, they've, they've missed this, um, and it might be a good idea for us to defer this particular item, um, just to get clarification on that. And the other thing that we, we could do, obviously, is pressure um, and, and uh, lobby the, um, the highways agency to reinstate the, the signage on the floor, but it will still obscure that particular sign, which may need to be raised if that's within the um, uh, within the uh, with, within their remit of what they can do, um, there may be different height um, restrictions for them or where they can put it. Um, they may need to reposition that particular sign. Uh, but um, certainly I think deferral might be the best idea at this stage on this particular item. Councillor Sands? I was going to suggest I make a proposal that the uh, uh, object is moved three metres away from the road and um, coincidentally it is about the same size and dimensions as the obeliscus featured in Space Oddity 2001. I don't know whether anyone noticed that. But no, serious proposal. I believe that the, the object is wrongly placed and I believe that uh, uh, as a serious proposal it should be moved three metres away from the road. I don't think they're bound to do it because that's where they're all. Yeah, well. yeah it's kind of, I, I just want to, to clarify what our approach would be if, if we were to, to defer it, as, as you're suggesting. Um, my understanding of the issue is that, is that, is, is that we're, we're concerned about highway safety. And in order to have a, an issue with highway safety, um, we, would, we would want to have some clarification from the highway authority that, that, that they share those concerns. Um, it, uh, if, we, if we were going to recommend that the object were, remo were moved, um, I would want to have the support of the Highway Authority that the existing arrangement is not appropriate. Um, so our, our first approach would be to speak with the Highway Authority. If they do have concerns, then we would potentially enter those negotiations and, and, and talk about moving the structure. Um, if, they, if they're happy with the way it is at the moment, um, I'd find it difficult for us to support those negotiations. Councillor Thomas. Oh, yeah. Uh, highway safety, first and foremost. I mean, not, I understand why they want to do this and, uh, and convert to all their telephone boxes. But uh, the pictures we're looking at the daytime, this is an illuminated advertisement. So we haven't got any pictures of what it's like at night. And obviously, that would be a completely different kettle of fish when you're driving towards it. I mean, the photograph, quite frankly, should have been taken from the road, not from the path. To address that issue. So I think deferment, just to clarify and make sure that highways uh, of health and safety are considered and met and so we don't go to any direction of whose fault it is. We don't want anyone's fault quite frankly. Uh, so I think just to clarify that and to make sure that they have addressed it uh, adequately. Uh, I don't think it has quite frankly looking at the photographs. <laughs> <coughs> you need to build if you want to defer it. If there's a proposal to defer, we will need to move it and second to defer this particular item. Not all of them, but this particular item. Councillor Stooley? Um, okay, so uh, unless 
Councillor Maxwell wants to move uh, this, I will move to uh, defer this to um, another meeting, please. With, uh, with reference um, to um, what was explained. Highway um, safety. Yeah. On highway safety grounds. So we'll need a second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Who seconded it, Councillor Maxwell? Yeah. Can build your centre. Did anyone want a discussion on this? I'd like to add a point if I may, Chair. Yes. I think it's not merely a question of highway safety in terms of uh, highways coming along and moving the sign. I really believe the thing is wrongly positioned, and in terms of safety, it should be moved further away from the road. So I'd like that to be incorporated into uh, consideration to any deferment. Well, I don't think we should put that in personally. I, I think where it is is okay. I can understand where you're saying they can't see the sign and the building of the road should have been done earlier. We it's should, not really should, the sign check, it's the proximity of the objection. Yeah, I know what you're saying, Coastal Sands, but I disagree with it. So uh, unless you want to move sure. that as well. Sorry, okay. Well, I put my hand up a few minutes ago. I said I would like to make a proposal, so I've already... Okay, have we got a second for that proposal? Chair, sorry. Yes? That's including the reasons for deferral, because you can't decide to move it without it being taken back to the applicant, as Lauren has explained, and which I've incorporated in minutes, so I think that's probably fair, fairly safely. The reasons for you to defer are on the grounds of highway safety, because the signage is obliterated, the road sign has not been replaced, there's concerns that the new structure will be larger and that there's a concern from members that it would probably be better relocated. There are the issues that Mara or the case officer will take up with the highways and if necessary go back to the applicant and bring back a proposal to a future meeting. So relocate it in, in with that while we're just... Okay, well that means I will move forward. Um, Councillor Graham? Thank you. I'd like to raise an additional concern, which is about energy use. So a quick Google tells you that each one of those double screens uses the amount, same amount of energy as somewhere between four houses and 30 houses. We're in a climate emergency. I think that has to be addressed. And if they're going to advertise, then um, then it should not be illuminated. Well, I don't think we got that part of the discussion because I would like to say they're fantastic in their health and safety of the protection and protection of residents around that area will be fantastic because they're about to use 999 and free phone calls, but we ain't got that part yet, so I wouldn't say it. Chair, just to remind you, we have had a move in significance yep. this particular item. Yep. Um, I've raised, I have a minute to those two points, but all those we in, do need to move up. All those in favour of referring this back. Deferring to the ground. Yeah. Um, I called it votes, and this is unanimous. No, so I'm going to vote against it, because I don't, I disagree with the movement. So it's Councillor Peake, Graham, Giles, Champion, Button, Bogeline, Everett, Maxwell, Stukely, Thomas and Sands. Well, I'll vote against. Chair, right, so that's first been passed to World Bank and referred to uh, the future meeting. Thank you. We now move on to the next one, which is in a percent same. Sorry, Chair, just before we do, could I have a couple of minutes to talk, have a chat with Laura about something I just picked up? Yep. Thank you. Thank
um, something in the reports, the uh, highways department then commented on the one we just done, and they haven't commented uh, on 4E. So we're going to recommend that we refer back 4E as well, which the recommendation is to defer. Is, did anyone, I need a seconder for that by the way, thank you. Is there any discussion on this? No, I move to the vote that we refer that back to highways as well. Thank you. All those in favour? No, it's not. Councillor Charles? Are you not Yeah, I, I, was, I was unclear on what, why we're deferring this one. Uh, because it's the same uh, highways and, and commented on, on why. Yeah, I appreciate that, but it's a pedestrianised area, isn't it? So, I mean, there's still highways. Still still high but, yeah, but. Um, and because I feel that there were some issues that I would have expected highways to have picked up on the one that we have just deferred, there is some doubt in my mind as to whether or not they've actually actively considered some of the applications where they haven't responded. So, I, th I think it would be better if we actually, actually had an explicit response from them. Well, then just We're on 4D, they have responded. <coughs> okay, thank you. So it's agreed that we do that. We will move on to 4D now, which is the one in between, which is on Barnes Road, and highways have responded to this. So, allow everyone to take this through quickly on this one. Okay, so the. Um this site is located here um, on St Swithin's Road, um, which runs between St Benedict Street and Westwick Street. Um, again, these will look familiar. These are the elevations um, for uh, an identical street hub to the one that we have just uh, con been considering. Um, so again, there are two applications here, one for the structure and one for the adverts. This is the site here, um, so you can see that there's an existing modern phone unit there. Um, so in this case, it's not a traditional phone box, but a, um, a, a covered phone on one side and an advert on the other. Sorry? Sorry. Um, sorry, that, that, yeah, that, that's what's there at the moment. The, the advertising, yeah, the advertising's already there, and the telephone's the other side. What they're going to do is replace that with a, with a, a what was that one? Thank you. Yeah, so these, these are existing photos. Um, and then we'll move on. Uh, so this is this is a plan. Um, as you, as you can see in the small hatched uh, grey colour there, um, there's it, it, the existing phone box um, or phone unit um, is located, and then the green box shows a um, the proposed street hub in broadly the same location. These are some um, visuals showing the existing situation and the proposed situation. Um, Again, this this application, it, it, these applications are subject to the same considerations, so amenity, impact, and, and impact on highway safety. Um, in this case, it's it's located in the same uh, locate, it's at the same same position as an existing unit of almost identical dimensions. And the recommendation is uh, to approve, uh, subject to a number of conditions. Thank you. Any questions, anyone? Okay, the recommendation is to approve. I move that. Sally, thank you. Thank you. Any discussions? Councillor Sands. Observation more than discussion, but you'll notice this is set away from the edge of the road. It's not on the edge of the road. This is set where the original phone box, existing phone box is, uh, a good couple of metres in this instance away from the edge of the road, which bears out my point on the previous thing. The previous one would have gone on to co op land, so I'm not sure they would have allowed it. Um, Councillor Stewie? 
Um, thank you, Chair. Um, as suggested before um, by Councillor Champion, I would like to propose, um, if uh, Councillor Champion uh, would like to do so, I'll, I'll second it, but I'd like to propose that we um, uh, seek the uh, results um, or the data that will come from, from this particular unit. Um, and uh, so I don't know what wording we want to put in that, but uh, the, the data to me is, is fascinating. I think we should uh, seek to have that on the basis that uh, as a, uh, um, a, a sort of compensation for the, uh, uh, the uh, objection that we might raise to it um, as um, advertising. Um, and um, I, I think that uh, another point that Councillor Champion made was, was fascinating to me, the, uh, the idea that uh, adver adverts could be targeted to the people in the vicinity. Um, be careful what you search for. If I could add to that. Just during our break, I was just looking online. Um, they monitor the Wi-Fi signals of people in the precinct, so you don't have to sign into the boxes for them to be monitoring you, which means that you aren't giving your consent. So actually, anyone within the vicinity of one of these will have their Wi-Fi signal picked up by the box to keep it, you know, so I do feel there's wider issues here, which I just don't feel have really been addressed, and I feel like they're being um, slightly you know, sidelined. I think that's a different subject completely. As like on the Sainsbury's card, they know everything what you order and what you do. And everything you sign up for a Sainsbury's card. No, you sign up for uh, a telephone as well. No. What I'm saying is, you don't. If I walk past that without ever signing on, it will pick up my Wi-Fi signal and keep track of that. In the underground networks in London, they did an anonymous, they claimed that they will be all be anonymous. In London, they did an anonymous um, Freedom of Information Act to determine if it was anonymous, and they proved that it couldn't be done anonymously. So I just feel there's a much wider discussion here, which it isn't just a billboard. You know, we're not just discussing advertisement, we're discussing. Big brother. Well, you know, um, there's a wider discussion, and we can dismiss it. But I wonder if our constituents and those people we represent would be happy with us dis dismissing it. Uh, can I, sorry, can, can I just come back on that? I, I, I hear what's being said, but um, in terms of land use planning, they're not land use planning issues, and I think they're, they're for, to be, they should be addressed outside of this committee. Um, as, as you say, there are wider issues, and, and planning, planning has a specific remit. It's to regulate the use of land. And, um, not the technology necessarily that goes in the structures that um, um, you're, you're, we're approving as a regulatory committee. Councillor Charles, did you want to say anything? No, Thank you. Councillor Sands? Does that mean then it's perhaps worth raising as a uh, discussion issue cross party in a full council at some stage? Because I, I think they're, they're valid points. Sorry, are you looking at me through that? I mean, that's entirely <laughs> <bad to me>. <laughs> <laughs> You and everyone here. I mean, um, I, I can see the points that uh, Councillor Champion was trying to make. I mean, certainly they're not going to get much out of my phone. Um, it doesn't have access to, to uh, Wi-Fi. Um, and I don't even know whether my phone has got Bluetooth. If it has, it's certainly not switched on. But um, I can see the points, and the, the point's been made a number of times in national media about uh, surveillance society, and um, I think it's something that is worth discussing. I think we're going off the point about what we're here for today to go through. I think you should bring this up on the awkward meeting or... That's or, what I just or, said. Yeah, is it worth something. raising on well, in another forum as a discussion? Well, yes, if you want to. You can do that any time you want. But uh, I think we need to discuss the plans what we've got in front of us today. Councillor Bergline? So uh, in, in many ways, I want the structure with some of the uh, some of the functions for the public, which I think may be appreciated to some extent. I definitely don't want the advertising. Um, I definitely don't want the data scraping without consent. But I don't see a way 
in planning terms to vote on that. So although there's like 50% of them I, I despise, <laughs> I, I, I think in planning terms I have to vote for it just to cut to the chase. Um, and I also think we should vote on the condition that was proposed. Okay, but the condition has been moved and seconded by Councillor Chamberlain again. Yeah, about um, asking, making sure we can get hold of the data. Is that okay, David or Lara? Um, well, yes. As I said in response to the, pre um, to the previous item, if members think it's necessary uh, to make the application acceptable, and that's that's because it, it must meet the test of conditions. It must be necessary. Um, so basically, if you didn't attach the condition, would you refuse the permission? Well, we, we can't right. see any reason why they would do it, but um, otherwise. Because, uh, I mean, you have to have in the back of the mind that, that, that they can appeal the, con yeah. the, the, the attaching of the condition. Um, but, yeah, if you, if you think it is necessary um, um, to make the, the, the permission acceptable, then um, um, I think we'd have to attach it to the full because uh, it's not a, a consideration of the um, uh, advert regs. So you need to attach the condition to the formal permission. Okay. And we can come up with the wording for it. Thank you. So, Councillor Graham. Thank you. I want to suggest that data mining or data security and advertising are both issues of amenity which warrant discussion, um, as well as the um, road safety stuff because it grabs your attention. And it seems to me that those things haven't been thought through. Um, so I'm, I'd be happy to defer it and allow it to be thought through. Um, I wouldn't be happy to pass it. Okay, we'll, we'll take this first issue first. It's been moved and seconded. Is there anyone want any discussion on that? Uh, so we get the data. We are City Council where to get hold of the data. All those in favour of that, please show. That's unanimous. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Bergler. So when it comes to the, the tapping into the Wi-Fi, can they actually tap in through the Wi-Fi of nearby residents? I've no idea. This is BT. They can probably do whatever they want. Well, that would definitely be an amenity issue, I, I think. Yeah. Well. well, no, so, sorry. The, 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 these, the, these as, as has been referred to previously, Same these are issues that are outside the planning system. They, they are they're, they're matters that need to be regulated yeah. um, through uh, whatever body oversees electronic communications um, and, and regulates that. Then they're, they're not. I, I, it would be an extreme stretch of the interpretation of amenity to suggest that data mining um, was was a, was a land use planning issue in, in, in that respect. So I, I must advise the committee that that's actually outside your, your, your remit in terms of exercising the, the Town and Country Planning Act. But is it an extreme stretch when the thing which we're voting on is literally, that's what it is. It's not a building, it's that, you know, the, the object. From, from, from a planning point of view, it's a structure that has adverts on it. That, that's that's what you're actually determining. It has some it it it, it, it has some other technology in it, um, in the, 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 that will allow some other things to be done, but not necessarily in the way that you're actually talking about them. It doesn't have they don't have to mine them. They don't have to tap into someone else's Wi-Fi. They don't have to be able to kind of monitor what your uh, what, what, what you are um, um, browsing when you're attached to the thing. You're talking about the you, you're, you're talking about the kind of ethics of of, of how these things, these things are run as, as 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 kind of businesses rather than the actual uh, rather than the structures that, that that are being used to um, house the technology. Uh, I'd just like to clarify the reason why I thought that we should seek to to have the data as a as a kind of compensation and to make it more palatable. Um, to, to vote through, um, and it is it is essentially um, a change of its existing use. It will be larger and carry advertising. So I think, from that point of view, there is an amen an amenity um, 
uh, issue with these, um, which uh, for me, um, the sharing of that data with the council, which would be interesting data for us to um, assess, um, will make it uh, more palatable to vote for. So um, on that basis, I would vote for this one. But I, I do um, agree somewhat with Councillor Graham that we perhaps should have been more um, more informed on these um, items before it came to the committee. I think we should go into those kind of things a long time. As I say, it's like going into the public not to use your credit card because they wouldn't take cash to them. What's that? Trouble is, your wife find that you've been up the pub all the time because you check, check your his account. I mean, if you're paying cash, you don't know you're there, does you? Right. Anyway, we'll move on. Any discussion on this? Coach Graham. Um, I think we're all agreed that we're not as prepared as we would like to be. Um, there are precedents for turning um, these down, but I'm not quite sure what they are. Um, looking at Adblock Bristol, those things have been turned down on planning grounds, and we're not well enough prepared, but we could be. So I'd like to propose that we defer this one as well. Okay, are you got a second for that? Thank you, Councillor Sands. Anyone want to make a discussion on that? Because you picked me in at enough time to, to decide if we need them or not, yeah? Yeah. Well, it's not whether we need them, it's whether the um, harm, whether the benefits would outweigh the harm to immunity and transport safety. Well, um, with respect, I disagree with that because you have an explicit comment in this respect from, from Norfolk County Council that they don't have an objection on highway safety. I, whilst, whilst you might disagree with me, um, I don't think that the data mining issue is actually a planning consideration. And um, whilst there may have been applications turned down elsewhere, um, I, would, um, I would not advise this committee to turn down those applications on, uh, on, on, on that particular issue. Well, it's been moved and seconded. And there isn't anyone who wants to speak. But I will take a vote on it. All those in favour defer it, please show. Sorry, you've moved, sorry Chair. Yep. You, have, you haven't moved to defer, you've moved previously to agree it, and then you've agreed with, then you went. Councillor Graham moved to defer this item. So are you withdrawing your motion to move the vote? We ain't so got on to, uh, we ain't got that far yet. Don't we? So have you got right. a seconder to defer, and have you yes, got any we reasons, have and what are the reasons? Well, the reasons that were given were, were, were that um, uh, about highway safety and whether or not data mining was, a, was an immunity issue. That's what I understood it. Yeah. All those um, in favour, please no. show. Uh, Chair, for, for clarity, um, was um, Councillor Graham um, asking for deferment uh, so that we can be better informed about uh, these units? Um, or? Um, or for other specific reasons, because I think maybe your words were put into Councillor Graham's a mouth there um, on this particular issue. Thank you very much for giving me a chance to come back on that. Um, yes, those are two of the reasons for deferral. Another one is we're looking at three together, and we should be able to look at the community, at the impact, the collective we're, we're, impact. We're looking at one at a time. Yeah, sorry, I, that, that's wrong. Um, and there are here. other immunity issues besides the data mining. Okay. Um, again, respectfully, you, you have to look at each one on its own merits. You cannot look at them all together. To do so would be wrong. Um, the these in the only three you are going to come to committee. That's a lot. So, so, sorry, can I just come 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 back to you? The, the, you, you? You think there are other immunity issues? Uh, can Can you help me understand what those are? The impact of advertising on the street scene, um, the lighting on wildlife, um, the climate impact of the energy use. Any more? Okay, I mean, the, the report does 
cover the impact on the street scene. Um, it doesn't talk about energy use. Um, that wouldn't be a material consideration in the determination of the planning of the, of the advert application, um, but it could function um, be a material consideration in the determination of the um, of the fall as could the impact of lighting upon wildlife. I mean, if members did feel that those were um, matters that um, would influence their decision and um, feel that they can't. When they have two options, they can refuse them in the absence of information, or they can defer them and we can try and get some information on them. Councillor Stukely. Um, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I'm happy now to um, have these all come back um, and I will vote um, in favour of deferment on this. Um, yeah. I can't understand why you are to pay this one personally. That's, that's me. I can see I've been in the right place. So I think what they're going to put there will be beneficial for the people of the city. I've seen them up in other places, so they look okay. Uh, we move to the bill if we want. Councillor Thomas. So yes. Uh, I'm minded to, to vote for it, but the, the issues raised by Councillor Champion are extreme and highly relevant and need investigation. This is not just to do with planning. I mean, in licensing, there are issues that we want to raise, but of course, they're not licensing issues. Then there are issues in planning, which are not planning issues. But those issues that Councillor Champion has raised are extremely important, and we do need, as a council, to be looking into that. Uh, business they don't wait to ask for permission. They go out there and get things. And in terms of the data mining, well, perhaps the, all the students uh, living just opposite this, this particular one might have some concerns about uh, any data being downloaded when they start uh, surfing the net or whatever. But in terms of planning, I don't think we can vote against it. Even if you defer it, will we come back to this because the data mining issue isn't a planning issue. But that issue of data mining is a huge one. And as a council, we should be looking into it, uh, but not in this forum. But I'll be voting for it. OK, so it's been moved to the recommendation. It's been moved to approve. It's been chair. seconded. Sorry, Chair. We've still got a motion on the table to defer. Okay. Which has been moved and seconded. It's been moved by Councillor Graham. Well, it's been moved and seconded, and I asked for the vote three times, and so I've got two people there. But hand we need up. to carry out that vote. And All those in favour of deferring it, please show. Right, those, it is a recorded vote. Those voting in favour of deferring are Councillor Graham, Councillor Champion, and Councillor Bogeline, Councillor Everett, and Councillor Stukeley, and Councillor Fans. All those against, please show. Those members voting against are Councillor Peak. Councillor Driver, Councillor Giles, Councillor Button, and Councillor Thomas. Okay, so that's been approved at the it It's been approved. Can we just ask when it comes back to get a little bit more information on what actual, because for, the, for it, the example of energy use, if I don't understand whether that in this case is a material planning consideration or not. So can we get some more some more clarity on how that fits in the planning system? Maybe examples of. Well, no, I really. Know. I mean, if you put a building up and you're going to put no union in it, you wouldn't ask for. All the stuff there in their building, would you? You could, you chair, you you, you could ask for certain, for certain elements of, of, of energy efficiency and and, and, and usage. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that is capable of being a material planning consideration. Um, yeah, I mean there are development management policies that talk about um, energy usage. Okay, we've got one other item on the agenda. Um, Chair, apologies, I need to leave the meeting. Thank yep, you. No problem. Yes. Thank you.
got one application left, which is for F29 Wonghood Road, application for the extension. Uh, no speaks on this has been brought here because it's a member of staff and it needs to come in front of the committee if it's a member. Uh, Dave, if you'd like to take the report, please. Thank you. As it says to uh, the household application um, from a member of staff, um, so it needs to come to committee for that reason. There have been no objections uh, or representations on it. Um, Robin Hood Road um, is quite a long road. It has numerous. Let me see that. Yes, you can. Um, kind of cul-de-sacs coming off it. This is one of those cul-de-sacs coming down here. So there's a T going off here. So the property in question is a semi-detached property at the uh, far end of a cul-de-sac. And that just shows it in a bit more detail. So in terms of the application itself, this is the existing um, layout of the property. This is the front elevation facing the street and the um, and the side elevation, the, the, the extension which I'll show you on the next plan is going in this location here in terms of the elevation and um, at the moment you go in there's a lobby and then you go upstairs um, to a landing and there's a toilet off the landing. Um, the proposal is to put a two-story extension um, that provides on the ground floor an additional lobby and a toilet then you go into the existing house up the stairs and then there's another, um, there's a, 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 a secondary kind of shower uh, and, and um, washroom uh, provided. Um, the extension is in this part of the building here. So it's got a, um, a little kind of cat slide roof off here. And then um, this is an existing window to the existing uh, stairwell. Um, this is to the downstairs toilet and this is to the upstairs bathroom, it's just tucked in under the eaves level. Uh, so this um, washroom is in full height. A um, few photographs, this is the application property So, and the extension will be in here, so it's quite tucked away. Um, stepping out into the road a little bit more, uh, so again showing the uh, front elevation. Um, it's also noticed, not, um, I'll, I'll finish the presentation. So the application property is um, tucked in down here beyond where the white van is. Um, so not very visible from the streets. And then, sorry, if I just go back, the next photo I'm going to show you is actually of these two properties. And it just demonstrates that they've had a, an almost identical um, extension previously. Uh, previously built. So the um, it, the matters, the, the plan considerations, the design and amenity and they are considered to be acceptable and the recommendation is therefore to approve. Okay, questions anyone? No, thank you. I move the recommendation is to approve. Second, thank you, Councillor Button. Any discussion? I'd just like to say something that is in my ward and I was, I was born about 50 yards away from this house. So uh, in, 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 in the next clue, in the next clue, as a matter of fact, same house, but in the next clue. So uh, we're there. There's loads of places I'm on that drove to head these stations. They, they look fine and they'll actually make us uh, better when you actually go in the front doors and stuff like that, make them a bit bigger. So, a, a, excellent that uh, these people are actually put these extensions on, I think, which make them into better family homes. So, I'll be looking in favour. And yet, yes, Francis Chen? Can I just ask why it's come to planning? It's a member of staff. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah, we did have a chair planning and bring one in once, and I suggested we all do a site reserve. <laughs> Very delighted. Okay, it's been recommended for approval. No one else wishes to speak. All those in favour, please show. Thank you. That's unanimous. Thank you. That's the end of the panel meeting. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.